So we're back for a unique episode to the channel, and I'm going to be discussing in this video kind of what we've gone through through COVID, I'm sorry to say the word, um, throughout the last year. And ultimately, I've got a couple of dates that I think are important down below. So if you see me looking like that, I'm just reading that next day. And I'm just going to try and remember what it was like and how it's impacted. And we'll, we'll do this sort of storyline of how this has impacted the property investment market and what opportunities it provides for us right now and moving forward in 2021. So I'm not going to do the usual. If you're interested in subscribing and finding out more, obviously subscribe and hopefully you're going to get a lot of value and hopefully it's just going to be like a bit of an insight on how my brain works towards this situation. So let me take you back to November 17th, 2019. And this was the first detectable case of COVID-19. Um, this was obviously in China. Now, I remember at that point, barely even, I didn't even know about it, if I'm honest. I never watched the news. Um, I never watched the news because I always think, one, it's full of negativity, and two, you'll end up finding out about it anyway from your mates if it's really that serious. So it went into um, Christmas and everything, didn't really think anything of it at all. All. And then as it got into January, a couple of people started messaging about it. Oh, have you heard about this? No, no, not really. And actually, I'll be completely honest with you. Um, I was one of the people that sort of made a little Facebook joke about it. Like, can you believe these people were going around saying this? This is what a joke or something like that. It basically an ill-informed post being a bit of a knob. Um, well, in hindsight, anyway. And I remember in February 2020, I was in Tenerife at the time, I was in a, on a summit, and the hotel that I was doing the summit at, when I flew away and I was in London the next week at an event, and in, in the hotel that we're staying at, Tenerife had its first COVID case in that hotel. You'd be like, <clears throat> okay. Again, didn't really think of it. This was towards the end of February and I was on a London business event. I was actually hosting the weekend and it was a really weird atmosphere. So as people were walking in this event, normally you shake hands and things like that. Hi, I'm Jamie. And you have people coming in and going like that with their elbows. I was like, what the going on here right something and okay a few people refused and shake my hand i'm like is this one on me and um it turns out that that's when people started taking it a lot more seriously and it really dramatically developed from that date so much so that actually this was the end of february by the end of march a third of humanity was in lockdown within one month a third of the world was in lockdown and now we were listening. Now, the thing is, what lockdown meant then compared to now is dramatically different. Lockdown was you are locked down. There were already very unique circumstances of why people could work, how they could do it. But one of the big things and for the property market is estate agents were shut down and construction companies were largely shut down as well for a duration. The world went on pause. We went into panic. Our investors went into panic. The vendors went into panic. And I've not seen anything like this ever since I've been in property. Um, and it sounds like what it was like in the last crash. And it become a bit of a free for all. And investors started getting nervous. And I remember at that point, we were putting in offers 30% below market value. And I'll be completely honest, we had investors um in and are in whether they should take on these deals because nobody knew how far it was going to fall. And ultimately, nobody should be trying to catch a falling knife with any investment they were making. So towards the end of May, coming into June, we come out of this first wave, if you like, or first lockdown to test this. And this is what I call the Black Friday effect. If you imagine Black Friday in America, you see these scenes of the, the shops being closed, it all sort of tied up and people outside like, come on, come on, come on. And then they open the doors and it's boom, going in there buying as much as possible. And it's actually very similar with um, what we experience through property in the UK. So, you know, estate agents were closed and bear in mind 95% of the market is represented through estate agents and suddenly they were open for business. So you had all these people that were looking to sell their property, all of these people looking to buy the property and they could do nothing with it. I mean, to the point where people just were on furlough. Okay, so I was, I was trying to call agents, trying to get deals and nobody was bloody working. And so suddenly this market was open and it created this absolute frenzy. And so within the first three months of that opening up, it pretty much made up for all of the lack of sales in the last four months before. 
and there were more sales in that quarter um, and it it it, it it reached record highs of worth of sales for the last decade or couple of decades because of this effect. What this did is it created this false economy and people were overconfident about selling, overconfident about buying. It was in that and then we went into the next lockdown. Now, did the panic ensue upon this? No, it didn't actually because people were a bit more um, numb to lockdown, what lockdown meant. A lot more people were ignoring it, kind of like now a lot of people are ignoring lockdown. Um, you know, we're filming this in the office because obviously we need to be here in film, but driving in, there's just as much traffic as normal, all of the normal stuff. Now, what's happened there is we've had this false props Okay. Now, as the market is going up, what happens is as you're building, you should build the foundations underneath it, right? And I've given this analogy before, but actually what's happening, we've got these kind of dry rot stumps put underneath, and this is my vibe of it. So when it does turn, I do think it's going to turn. We've had stamp duty removed. We've had furlough extended. We've had B bills. We've had C bills. We've now got the recovery loan. We've had stamp duty extended until September, furlough extended until se uh, September, um, and boosting, 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 boosting. We've had billions, billions and billions and billions. Um, I don't know if you've seen uh, Seaspiracy. Is it Seaspiracy? Seaspiracy recently, where they were saying world hunger is solved with uh, 28 billion a year world hunger. We spent about 400 now billion on the recovery of this just in the UK. Okay, so it gives you an idea of the size of how much money has been pumped into this. Now, here's the issue. What this is what it's done for the market right now is propped it up. And you can see that as great or not, but actually the highest risk is when it's at the height of a market, okay? Because it could crash and turn at any point. Now, do I think the turn is gonna be No, I don't because of this world climate. Um, it would have to happen to everyone to do that. And actually there's a lot of liquidity in the market. But the problem is, it's false inflation. We've had 5% deposits coming in, which obviously, surely we learned what happened to the market last time. Artificial increases, people can't afford property, but this is encouraging trying to pay more for property that they can't afford already. The stamp duty, the furlough, all of this has to come to an end. So what I think we're going to see is this stimulus eventually does need to wane off. The problem with this is it kind of all happens at once. September. There's no more government stimulus at the moment. Furlough comes to an end. The loans come to an end. We have to start paying back the loans that we had from last year. No grants anymore, as it stands. Stamp duty comes back in. 5% mortgages, we'll see what's happening. But I don't think they'll be around for as long as people think. Now, the problem is, if everyone knows that the doors are closing, and it's pretty public, what does that mean? Everyone's trying to get in. So I think what we're going to be seeing up until August, September is buying, 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 completion rates going up, up, up. The sale price is going ridiculous. And I think it comes to September. If at least one or two of those isn't extended, it will be like this. You get to the end of it and the cliff is hit and it will drop. Now, there's always corrections in markets, but where will that correction be? Who knows? Now, I think the government's job right now is to continue to give this support because yes, the grants, yes, opening up, but I think it's all about building trust right now. We're about to come out of lockdown 57 or whatever it is. And what we need is something that is consistent. I think if we end up needing to go back into lockdown, maybe the vaccines haven't been as appropriate um, for what we thought and solved the issues that we thought it would solve. I think there's a really good chance riots are going to come in. I think there's a really good chance that a lot of the lendability is going to get swallowed up. I think if furlough's not extended again in September, I honestly fear for a lot of people's jobs. There's a lot of friends of mine that own businesses that have struggled a lot more than we have during this. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to be let go. We're really fortunate right now um, that we've been really pulling together as a team. We've been really creating, really pushing ourselves to um, add value to people and make money as a business. So we're not going to be in that position. I feel really confident saying that. But a lot of people aren't as fortunate. I think a lot of people are relying on the increase in prices right now to make money through property. But when that correction comes, 
I honestly think it's going to be a free for all. And we're seeing a strong seller's market right now that we've not seen before. But sellers beware, buyers be ready. It is going to be attack time. And I know that sounds a bit like, oh my God, you're taking advantage. But yeah, okay, the blood is there and the sharks are going to be out. But you don't need to be a shark. You can go out with a value add mindset. But I'm telling you, 2022 coming into that is going to be a buying frenzy, or I should say a buying opportunity frenzy, because the market's going to be a bit colder. And I honestly think we're going to see a massive discount coming in where you're going to be able to pick up some phenomenal deals if the market doesn't stimulate, the government doesn't stimulate the market more. Now, there's pros and cons of this, by the way. As entrepreneurs, you kind of want chaos in the market because chaos creates opportunity. But for the UK economy, it really is going to be a bit of a nightmare the next decade. But what I'm hoping for is that this track that the government's been doing with the stimulus, with the rollout, with the vaccines, and that is actually the, the, the correction's inevitable. But I'm hoping the correction will be more like 10, 15% rather than 30, 40% that some pundits are predicting. So who really knows? Look, this is just one man's opinion, okay? This is what I think will happen. And a lot of the predictions are really unknown because Nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow with the government coming out with these new guidelines, with the vaccines and the effectiveness, the new strains that are coming in, the rest of Europe. What I do know right now is we need to stick together. We need to pull in. And, you know, when this staycation comes in, when you can go up, you know, buy local, support your local economy and really push that forward. Because ultimately, yes, this is a property channel. Yes, this is about making money. But I know I'm going to make a lot more money in my life in the long term if the country I'm in is stable. So make sure you're giving back as much as possible and stay safe through this. And I'll keep you up to date as we're going through. I know this is a bit of a weird video. Normally it's jumping it to one, two, three, four, but hopefully it's interesting and just sharing my inner thoughts, which I'm going to try to do a little bit more on this channel and give you some market updates to what I think is happening and what you should be looking out for. But what I'm actually interested in is a conversation. I know YouTube is a little bit of a channel where I speak and you listen. That's what I see a lot of people doing, but I'm interested in engaging a little bit more. So what I'd be really interested in, if you're interested, subscribe, like all of the usual, it does really help with the growth. But let me know what you're thinking about the market right now. What do you think about the last year? What do you think about how the governments approach this? What do you think about the stimulus packages? What do you think when the correction, hopefully you agree, it's not an if, it is a when the correction comes in. Number one, when do you think it's going to happen? Two, how much do you think it's going to fall? And three, what are you going to be ready to take advantage of and add value to your local community? By the way, if you're interested in having some live thoughts every single week over on my Instagram, I'm now doing some live questions where you can ask me directly and get it answered within the hour. So you're getting that live interaction. Hey, I always like that direct communication. So if you're interested, you can find me at Jamie York Aspire over on Instagram. Hopefully you got value from this video. Let me know in the comments. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.